Right, that's good. All right, all right. So just like we started yesterday, we're gonna be saying some prayers, saying up prayers. We're gonna sound off the show far. So we can start this off in the spirit of the most high. Okay? Yeah. All right. So everybody if you can turn to Psalm 61 and we're gonna start at verse one. We don't have to get up yet. Once we start blowing the show far, then we'll we'll stand up. So um I want James, Jacob. Read it how you did last night. Everybody's going to repeat after him. Once you get to Psalm 61, say Cain. Psalm 61, verse 1. Hear my cry. O oh, Elohim, oh, attend unto my prayer. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth, from the end of the earth, will I cry unto thee. Will I cry unto thee? But my heart is overwhelmed. But my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me. For thou hast been a shelter for me. And a strong tower from my enemies. And a strong tower from my enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the convert. I will trust in the convert of our lives. Salah. Salah. For thou, O Elohim, for thou, o Elohim, has heard my vows. Has heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Of those that fear thy name. Thou will prolong the king's life. Thou will prolong the king's life. And his years as many generations. And his years as many generations. He shall abide before Elohim forever. He shall abide before Elohim forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth. Oh, prepare mercy and truth. Which may preserve him. Which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name. So will I sing praise unto thy name. Forever. Forever. That I may daily perform my vows. That I may daily perform my vows. Hallelujah. I'm going to stand up and sound the trumpet. Everybody face the east. Yeah, I say. Yeah, I 
Kase, Redzonka, Redzonka, Kashir, Kashir, Bashamai, Bashamai, Gamba Ari, Gamba Ari, Tain Lanu, Tain Lanu, Ed Lekum Zarkanu, Ed Lekum Zarkanu, Kimo, Kimo, Shagam, Shagam, Anaknu, Anaknu, Machalnu, Machalnu, Lekayavenu, Lekayavenu, Wa'al Tevienu, Wa'al Tevienu, Videy Nisayon, Videy Nisayon, Ella Hatsuleinu, Ella Hatsuleinu, Kingdom come, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done. Thy will be done. As in heaven, as in heaven, so on earth, so on earth. earth. Give us this day, give us this day, our daily bread. Our daily bread. Forgive our trespasses. Forgive our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Trespass against us. Lead us not, lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the power, and the glory, and the glory forever. Test of that, right? We all been attacked probably harder in the truth than in the world, right? Okay. Why? Because Satan can't cast out Satan. So why he, why would he attack us when we were doing fil filthiness in the world, right? So just like they did Yahushua and try to persecute him for, for being in the truth and in the full spirit, so shall they do us. What else do we learn? Mm -hmm. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If 
any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the word I say to the assembly. Mm. Break, break that down real quick. So, the, um, verse 19 says, I love our Following right, but we sin, then Jehovah, don't be uh, surprised when Jehovah chastises us. And the rest of it is about uh, if we do right, then Jehovah will come into our temple and eat from us. He'll bring the Ruach and the Holy Spirit into us to where we can teach more and we can have more of the Spirit when we do the Is it good to be chastised by the Father? Yes. Because if we're not getting chastised for our own. What could that mean? He does not care about us. And what else? He, he don't care about us and what else? The spirit has left us. That's probably the worst feeling you can ever have. Right? It's like beating all your teeth through and nothing you can do. Uh, it's a bad feeling, right? So we went over the first part, which is the spirit. You have to get your spirit right before getting anything else right. Our enemies knew that when they took our mind and they used the Willie Lynch theory saying, if you take the mind and the body, shall follow, right? So they use that theory for evil, but we're going to use it for good, okay? So, three stages to a Yah's temple starts with your spirit. You get your spirit right, the mind shall follow, and the mind shall tell the body to follow as well, right? So, we're going to go to the second stage, which is the mind, right? Got to get our mind right, because our, our mind can wonder, can't it? This is, uh, I know it's been times when I was younger in the truth where I could be reading scripture and get to think about something else, right? Because my heart wasn't purely on the most high at the time, right? But we have to make it up in our mind that we're going to submit to the most high in all things, right? So if uh, somebody can give me John 8.32 and then also somebody give me Romans 8.1, we gonna start at Romans eight and one. So y'all can really go to Romans eight and one first. I just need somebody to give me John eight and thirty two. John eight thirty two. John chapter eight verse thirty two. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We went through that yesterday that us knowing it's true, although we were going to always go through the curses and always go through problems, it set our spirit free, right? Now we can dwell in peace in this captivity. Not saying we want to run from any type of chaos or issue, but we understand when things happen to us, they happen to us by who? And what did he say? When you come to a lower state, take it what? Cheerfully. So we understand that when things happen to us now because we know the truth and who we are, and that it's chastised by our Abba, our Father, we take it cheerfully and we're in peace with it because we know it happened because we did it, not because it just happened, right? So now it's time, since we got our spirit right, it's time to get our mind right. So Romans 8 and 1, who got that? Who got Romans 8 and 1? Romans 8 verse 1. There is, therefore, now no condemnation to them which are in HaMashiach Yehoshua, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Ruach. Say that one more time. There is, therefore, now no condemnation to them which are in HaMashiach Yehoshua, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Ruach. What's condemnation? Judgment. Judgment, right? Who would you rather take judgment from the enemy in the flesh or your your right? Because what do we have waiting for us if we stay true to the Most High? The kingdom come, thy kingdom come, right? Thy will be done as in heaven, so on earth. So he's telling us if we stay in the ruach, we're not going to receive condemnation from him. So that should be easy on the mind, right? Now I know in my mind if I keep. His law, statutes, and commandments to keep the faith in the Mashiach that there is no condemnation for me. 
we come in full in spirit, right? The Messiah took it cheerfully. Why can't we? Knowing that it's something great coming for us, right? And all most of the time, because we see it, it's just like for black people, right? A lot of us who's ignorant or in the world, we always have this theory of, I need to see it to believe it. But that's not faith, is it? It's not faith at all. So we have to really practice faith. Because if you have high faith, then your works are going to follow you. And you're going to start gravitating people toward you who have that same faith. And now you, you have here a kind of congregation who's in the true faith of the Most High and the Son of Yosha, right? Okay? Amen, so walk not after flesh, but after the Spirit. And the Spirit is what? What did we go over yesterday? What is the Spirit? The Word, right? So now that we have that cleared up uh, towards a step to a Yah temple, let's move on to the next phase again, which is the mind. So somebody get me Numbers chapter 16, verse 21. All right? So what we're about to do is go over this first link. We'll pull it up. The first link, right? So the first link, um, we're going to read along into it. So social media is actually one method of the following in mind. Can we agree? So somebody gave me another method of defiling your mind, right? Music. What else? Movies. Books. Certain books, yeah. Games, yeah. Environments, right? All good things, right? Somebody tell me what does television mean? What does television mean? So when you separate television, tele itself is a Greek meaning, which means an end or complete. So tele by itself is end or complete. And then you have vision. In the Greek, or not also seen in the Hebrew, it means vision or prophecy, right? So when you put these two meanings together, you have a complete end prophecy. And what are what are they showing in most of these movies now? In times. Our enemies are telling them themselves not only of what weapons they have, but they know what's coming. Right? Let's go to first uh what is it? The first purge. And let's put this in mind. We gotta put this in a, in a, a mindset of ours. How many purges have they made, right? How many purges have it been? Four. And this why is this why is this one called the first purge? But where? Where specifically? The black communities. Right? If y'all seen the movie The First Purge, they're they're basically their first so called test was in the black communities, in the Hispanic communities, right? Because they have this, this, this mindset that we're animals, we're thieves, we just chaotic people. Three-fifths of a man. And that's a whole nother lesson right there. Three-fifths of, three of a man. Just property and animals, right? So they said, we're gonna, we're gonna test this, this pro project here first, right? So what happened in the movie was this. Because it, that method didn't work in the black community, like one thing about us is we under curses, and we know we under curses, right? But we're not going to let the system determine how we're going to be under this curse. <laughs> it's, it's backwards, but it's true. Meaning this: how many, how many of us we kill each other, right? But then a white man kills us, then we get offended, we want to rally, boycott. It's just like this: it's like a uh, a parent, right? I can only whip my child. You can't whip my child. So that's how the the uh, our, the black community in that movie perceived it. Like, yeah, we we sell drugs to each other, we kill each other, but y'all not about to have no project in our neighborhood. 
trying to pay us to kill each other. So what happened? What happened when they, when they system or their method didn't work? What did they do? Say it again. They sent in their own soldiers to start killing black people. They sent in their own soldiers to start killing black people. What just happened in Chicago? They say that there's a bunch of gang wars and people being shot right and left, but you know, it's, it's really the cops paid off people going in there killing us and then saying that we did it. So they have sent agents into the, our neighborhoods to kill us all. And just like the, the first uh, pur first Purge movie, what did they say? We don't know who, who that is killing everybody. These people just came out of nowhere. And then they found out later on it was it was soldiers, paid the agents, CIA, coming in their neighborhoods causing chaos because we would turn on each other on their watch. You see? So what they're telling us through these movies is a vision. They're telling us their complete vision or prophecy of what they know to come. Just like in X-Men, just like in Independence Day. Where do you think they get cherries from? Or these uh, UFOs? Somebody get that from me. You can go Ezekiel and we can go Jeremiah. Hey, Will, pull up another link for me. Um, Google and type in spinning UFO. Um, Google. You got it? Somebody find a, uh, give me, somebody give me Jeremiah. So let's see a prophecy of just the Messiah himself. Um, Jeremiah 4 and 13. And we, let's start at, uh, Jeremiah 4 and Four and twelve. Somebody got Jeremiah four and twelve. Jeremiah four verse twelve. Even a full wind from those places shall come unto me. Now also will I give sentence against them. Behold, he shall come up as clouds. He shall come up as clouds. So when, a lot of time when they show a UFO coming in independent, they will have the clouds separate, right? And his chariots. And his what? Chariots. Exactly. Go to images. Go to images. Click that one right there. No. Nah. The below it. Below it. The below it. Go back to images. Right there. Uh -huh. And his chariots, right? And his chariots shall be as a whirlwind. A whirlwind. A lot of times in the movies, what are they showing? When the chariot's coming down, what is it doing? Spinning. All right. Come on. As a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe unto us, for we are spoiled. We are spoiled. How are we spoiled? Because we're comfortable in America, right? We're comfortable with the heat and waves. So this is how he's going to come back as a whirlwind in a chariot, a UFO, as they show you. Anybody got Ezekiel yet? Nobody? Give us one minute. Ezekiel. Anybody got any questions? Anybody got questions? No? No questions? Well, imagine a big horse, a stallion, as quick as an eagle, coming at your head. <laughs> so let's get a. Uh, Ezekiel 1. Let's 
Which chapter? Which, which, which was that? Read, read it for me. That's a bright, scary sight, ain't it? And how do, when when the UFO come come in the movies, what's the first thing you see? A bright light. Most people when they see it, they do this, right? Because it's so bright. This is biblical prophecy they talking about. So now not only are they showing you that they know the Messiah is coming. They also show that they're trying to get people prepared. That's why you got Donald Trump talking about he need a, 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 a space force. You got they, they got satellites in space. Who be giving that? The lady nest in the stars, or the like the eagle, right? They're doing all these things that we think they're preparing for other countries. No. How do we know that? Because they're all in one, they're all in one Confederate union called United Nations. So we know they're not against each other. They preparing for the Messiah, right? So that we we know that we know that they're preparing carnally for the Messiah. So how must we prepare? But we first have to get what right? Mine. Alright? So if we just drop that. We're gonna we gonna move on. So somebody give me numbers 16 and 21. So we gotta stop going every day. And majority of the day we all in, in television, social media games, a lot of people on YouTube. You know, so caught up in what's going on in the world, but the word tell you all that, right? Okay. So we have to prepare ourselves spiritually, mentally, and physically for what's to come. But first, we must first prepare ourselves spiritually. And then we should get our mind right. So give me Numbers 16 and 21. Numbers 16, uh, verse 21. Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. Say it one more time. Separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. So you're supposed to separate yourself from them. Why? Because if, you, if you're getting caught up in their system, if, you, if you're dwelling among them, you're going to fall into their folly, right? How are you going to ever become spiritually clean like that? How are you ever going to have the right mindset to do right if you're around filth and lucre, right? So we, as a people, must separate ourselves because it's judgment coming to you. And you don't want to be a part of that, do you? Nope. We ain't going to even go into the judgment of enemies. That's a whole other lesson itself, right? Okay. <laughs> but just understand, the Most High has ordained separation from the beginning. Just like he put Adam where? What part of the garden? Eden, right? He put him on a whole different side, right? So... Let's go to, uh, keep reading actually, keep reading. Verse 22. And they fell upon their faces and said, O Elohim, the Elohim of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? So it says, shall one man sin, shall he be wroth with all the congregation? Let's see. And Jehovah spake unto Moshe, saying, speak unto the congregation, saying, get you up from the tabernacle of Quarach, Dehan and Abarim. And Moshe rose up and went into Dehan and Abarim, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men. So why, why, did, why did Moshe tell the, the congregation to depart from these specific men? They weren't clean. And can clean mix with unclean? Righteous with unrighteous? So we have to understand and take these examples of our forefathers. Okay. 
So we have to take these examples that we cannot repeat. It's impossible to be all the way clean around unclean people. And we can take that physically and spiritually. Just think about it. I'm, if we sitting on the couch, I'm going to use Yaquari and Eliezer. Yaquari, if you, Yaquari, if you sitting on the couch and Eliezer are smelling like must in three games of basketball, how long are you going to actually sit there before you move? <laughs> so we got to take that same thing and learn how to smell people's spirit. Right? Because people can smell good from the flesh. They can smell good, smelling like roses, all type of sweet incense. But their spirit is defiled and unclean and filthy. And most of the time, you can tell by when people open their mouth and start speaking. So we have to learn how to discern this, right? Keep going. And And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs. Touch what? Nothing of theirs. You're not supposed to even touch anything unclean. You're not supposed to even touch anything unclean. Because Wickedness can't consume you if you stay around it long enough. To the point where, I'm going to use the magazine example again, if your quarry has stayed right there for long enough, everybody will be trying to figure out who is the one sneaking. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually, if you stay there long enough, his stench will get on you. No, seriously, that happens. People stay, if, if, especially if we sit in, we play sports, if you sitting right here, and you in a, in, on a bus next to somebody who stink. That part that's on that person touching them is going to stink. My arm is going to start to stink. So we got to take that also with people that we surround ourselves by, whether that's who teaching us, whether that's who we're teaching, whether that's who we build it with in the word. We can't allow stench to come in the congregation because it can defile the whole thing, right? So Moshe was telling the congregation that y'all need to get away from these people and don't even touch nothing that they've touched because everything they've touched is defiled. Right? And touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. Keep going. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abarim on every side. And Dathan and Abarim came out and stood in the door of their tents and their wives, and their sons, and their little children. And Moshe said, Hereby ye shall know that Yehoah hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. Mm. And how many people can stay in the mind of the Most High, and not their own mind? You see? That's why we have to get our spirit right, because we got to understand, all the things that we were doing in the world is because, it's because we want to do it. It wasn't the most high. So coming in is true. We have to give all that up and reprogram ourselves to get in the mindset of the most high. Okay? So Moshe was that example of being in the mindset of the most high. Because when he wasn't in the mindset, what happened? You know what I'm saying? He, he, the people got to him, right? The people got to him. Keep going. We can go to 30. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then Jehovah hath not sent me. But if Jehovah make a new thing, and the earth open up her mouth and swallow them up, with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked Jehovah. So when things happen to people, and this is it, my this is talking about people and the truth, when things happen to people, and we, as a vessel, an example, trying to tell people to do right, that you're going off. You're going off, brother. You're going off, sister. This is not what this is. Please have an ear to hear, and they just turn their back, and then something happened to them. Understand that that wasn't by your hand, but that was by the Most High. And he just used you to send them the message. But we can't do that if we're in our own mind, right? So who mind should we have? Most high mind. 
And he is holy and he's clean in all things, right? So give me 1 Samuel 1 and 28. We're going to get another example of staying in the mind frame of the Most High. So 1 Samuel 1 and 28. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 28. Therefore, also I have lent him to Yahuwah. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to Yahuwah, and he worship Yahuwah there. Chapter 1 and 28. Matter of fact, let's start at, let's start at 1. Let's get, let's get into a quick story. Let's get into a quick story real quick. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1. Now there was a certain man of a Mount Beyond, Zophim, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elchanah, Elchanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elahu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zub, and Ephrathite. Ephrath, verse 2. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, yeah. Anna, and the name of the other, Penina. And Hanina had children, but Hannah had no children. So this brother had two wives, one that could not have children and one that did have children, right? Verse 3. And this man went up out of his yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto Yahuwah of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli Hafni and Phineas, the priest of Yahuwah, was there. And when the time was that El Kana offered Pige to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters' portions. But unto Hana he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hana, but Yahuwah had shut her womb. Mm. So, the husband favored who? Yeah. He favored Hannah. Why? Because although she couldn't have children, but she was obedient. Not just to him, but to who? No. And although we can't have things when we want to have them, or when we should have them, if you stay obedient, you get a worthy portion, right? So the one who had the children, she had a portion. She got her, she got what she deserved. But the one who didn't, because she was obedient, had a worthy portion, right? And just like people in the truth, right? We all in the truth, we all got the law of such command. We are happy that we found out who we are, but more but some people get more than others due to their works, their fruit, right? And their obedience and patience with Yah. Because they're not in their own mind and they're not on their own time. Right? So keep going. Verse 6. And her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret, because Yehovah has shut her womb. No, she couldn't have women, uh, children. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of Yehovah, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. So she went up to, through all this time she couldn't have children, she still went up to the Most High and praised him, right? She still praised him, gave him the praise, and she showed him that she this is what she wanted. She wept. And what else did she do? She started fasting. What's the good thing about fasting? Children, I know the children know. Somebody, the children, somebody give me, what, what's the good things about fasting? Sacrifice, that's key word, sacrifice. Right? What else? Remember we talked about the set the seven things uh to get into the kingdom, right? What was the first thing we he had to do coming through the door? Give it back. Watch. Watch. Sacrifice. 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 So we have to sacrifice in order to be heard, right? Keep going. Okay. Verse say, Then said Elkana, her husband. To her, Hana, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not, and why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat 
by post the temple of Jehovah. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto Jehovah and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Jehovah of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid. So he said, if you could just hear my prayer and look at what I'm going through. Why? Because the other wife was provoking her, right? She was, she was throwing in her face that she could have children, and she couldn't. Was she shamefaced? Not at all. She was proud, wasn't she? And what and what did the scripture say in um, Ecclesiastes 26? Mm -hmm. I believe it's another one. Uh, not that one. We talked about the, the one wife should not hate the other. You know what I'm talking about? Let's get that. He was in 26. Twenty-six and six. I might read Sirach twenty-six and six. But a grief heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman, mm. and a scourge of the tongue which communicates with all. And a scourge of the tongue which communicates with all. And that's what that woman was doing. And she was vexing him, right? Making her feel sad that she couldn't have children. But let's see what happened. Verse 11. Verse 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O Yehoah of hopes, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child. Then will I give him unto Yehoah all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. He took the Nazarite by the vow. And she told him, if you give me a child, I'll give him up to you. Right? I'll give him up to you. So, let's see where I want to go. Let's hop to 20. Let's hop to 20. Let's get to the point. First Samuel, verse 20. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of Jehovah. Because she stayed faithful and obedient to the Most High, and she could not have children, and the Most High favored her for that. Even through all her sorrows of being persecuted, right? Being vexed. She stayed in the mindset of Yah. And what did he do? He blessed her. He blessed her. But what did she give up first? Is this the blessing I'm talking about? Is this did she bless him with this child? Or with something else? Hmm? Was this the blessing that she received? I would say yeah, but no. What are we about to go to? Watch this. Yes, but no. So she got her first child, but what did she have to do with the child? So she had to sacrifice more though, right? And he became a high priest. Now let's go to first Samuel two and twenty. First Samuel two and twenty. Watch this, y'all. Pay attention. Come on. And Eli blessed Elquana and his wife, and said, Yehoah, give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to Yehoah. Mm. And they went on to their own home. And Yehoah visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons. How many? Three, three sons, sons. Three sons. And two daughters. And two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before Yehovah. Mm. Hallelujah, man. Let's give it up for the most high, man. Give it up for the most high. Yeah. That's what happens. When you when you are faithful, when you're obedient, when you're in the mindset of Yah, he, he continues to bless you. 
So she couldn't have what she couldn't have children at first. Why? Because we first have to do what? We have to be brought to a lower state. And we can we have to show that we can take it cheerfully, right? And what us going through the persecution comes what? Blessings. What's the saying we always grew up with? Before better days come, you must go through worse. So that has to that has to be shown. You have to show that you are faithful. Because anybody can show they're faithful through happiness. Anybody can show it. The real test is when you fall on your face. Are you able to get up? And still have the same faith and happiness and love that you had in the beginning when you was happy. And what do we, we what do we else do we see that happen in? Relationships. So if you're showing that same faith and love to y'all, then we should be able to say that, show that same faith and love to our woman. And women gonna do that same thing to their children. And now it's a, just a occurring thing or a cycle going on. And now we're in that chariot. We're in that chariot, right? We in Zion again in the spirit, okay? So this is what we have to do. So give me uh, Luke 18 and 28. So let's stay in the spirit and the mind of the most high and he's going to give us things on this earth, right? We have to show and prove ourselves to be faithful. Okay? okay. All right. Luke 18, verse 28. Luke 18, verse 28. Then Kepha said, Lo, we have left all. Follow thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that have left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of Elohim, Elohim said, who shall not receive many fold more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting. So we got to understand, we went through this last night, but we got to reiterate it because we got to understand, we, we aren't the first people that give up everything or willing to give up everything. We won't be, we aren't the first and we won't be the last, will we? Think about this. Put this in your mind, right? Yahushua was in Ari and Cain since the beginning of time, right? He left his royal throne to come down and kill himself. Not kill himself, but you know what I mean. To give his life up for us. Right? He left his royal throne. He had no worries. He was good. And he came down to be a sacrifice for us. And that's true love. And he didn't even hate us for it. He still loved us. And in the midst of him being persecuted, he still asked our Abba, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So we have to be, it's hard for us because our mind has been defiled and it has been raped by the enemy. So now when we get things, because things have been taken from us, when we get things, we just don't want to let it go, right? No, I can't get my money up. I need my money. Even though she got 100000 in the bank. No, I can't get this shirt up. Even though she got a whole wardrobe. He got a whole wardrobe. No, nah, brother, I can't I can't show up to that, man. I got other things to attend to. Can't attend a holy day? You can't attend a holy day? You got other things to do? Holy days... Are holy days a commandment? Do you have to do them? Yeah. Well, yet you got some brothers and sisters thinking you don't have to keep the holy days. He said throughout your generation. What throughout your generation mean? Whatever. So what does that mean for those who feel like we don't have to keep them? They're in their own mind, right? But what did y'all say? Keep him for everywhere. In your mind, right? So when we keep him in our mind, this is what happens. Joshua 1 8. And see how the spirit moves. I wasn't even supposed to go there yesterday, last night. <laughs> it's supposed to be for today. We're going to go back to it again. Joshua 1 8. Dang. 
Joshua 1 and 8. This book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy, thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Mm. So this is what happens. Did Hannah have good success? When King David and Solomon was in the spirit, did they have good success? Yes. See, we have to start really using our forefathers and foremothers as examples of how to live from the good and from the bad, right? Somebody name me another woman that had good success. Ruth. What about Ruth? She, she left her family from uh, the Moabites to come to it. To come to be in Israel with her, with her mom. Who else had good faith? Wow. So she loved her people. Um, she shaved her people from Judah. Who else? Mary. Abraham. Abraham. Right. What about Judah? Hmm? All good examples, right? All good examples of how we should be. So it is women, powerful women we had in Israel, who show very good faith, as you see. You got some brothers who don't like to hit on these stories. I like to hit them because we have to show our sisters in obedience, you still can be powerful. You still can be a strong woman, as we've seen. And as a proverb for three, uh, 31 woman, right? Okay. So. We have to shine light on both areas of men and women, on how powerful we are as a people together, though. Not mixing and mingling with the heathen, not doing our own thing in our own mind, but us coming together in a mind state of Yah, right? Right, have a Yah mind. And through that, we gather together. We understand that we are not a nation desired by the enemy, but by who? The most high. All right. So let's go to First Peter four and one. First Peter four and one. So in this life, we definitely can have success, but understand if we're not like-minded, if we're not willing to sacrifice, we won't be glorified in the kingdom. You'll be the least in the kingdom, actually. But the work starts here first, man. We have to really be willing to to give up everything. All right. Who can raise their hands and say, I'll, I'll give up everything right now? All right? You give up everything? Okay. Everybody said that until it's time to put it to the test. But we'll see soon for everybody. First Peter 4 and 1. First Peter chapter 4, verse 1. For as much then as Mashiach had suffered for us in the flesh, mm. arm yourself likewise with the same mind. Uh, repeat that one more time. Verse 4. For as much then as Mashiach had suffered for us in the flesh. In the what? In the flesh. In the what? In the flesh. Uh -huh. Arm yourself likewise. likewise. Arm your what? Arm yourself. How do we arm ourselves? Ephesians 6 and 10. Somebody give me Ephesians 6 and 10. Arm yourself likewise. Arm yourself likewise. He told us to arm ourselves likewise as the Messiah did. Not like King David. Not like King Solomon. Not like Adam. But like the Messiah. The ultimate sacrificial goat. The lamb, I'm sorry. Lamb. Right? Sometimes that is a hard pill to swallow for people. So let's see what, read that one more time. Verse 4. For as much then as Hamashiach had suffered for us in the flesh. Suffered for us in the flesh. Nicole, what can you give that's more that's more um, important in your whole life? That subsidizes life. 
What about you, Ted? What can you give that that be more valuable than his life? What about you, Yvonne? Yo, your clothes and food be more valuable than he owes you his life? What about you? 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 Yo? What about you? Definitely not me. What about you? You can't give nothing more valuable than this life. So that means the only thing, the only thing that you can give is what? The Bible, the scriptures say, I for nine, two for two, right? He gave his life. We have to give ours and be a living sacrifice. In all things. For men, we always want to bring out the scripture. Your wife just be subject to her husband. In all things, we got to be subject in all things to your children. You want your wife right, you got to be right. Woman, you want your children right, you got to be right. That's how this thing goes. It's called a ripple effect. So read that from the top again. First Peter chapter 4. For as much then as Christ, for as Mashiach has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Mm. Let's see what the armor is. Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in Adonai and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of Elohim. Put on the whole armor of Elohim. Come on. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That you may be. What does the wiles mean? Temptation, temptation and deception. Traps. Right? Let's see some traps right now. Will, give me that link. Let's go to the, uh, the first link. Let's see some traps that Shaitan brings forth. Scroll down. So it says, uh, start right there. It says, the more one researches mind control, the more one will come to the conclusion that there is a coordinated script that has been in place for a very long time with the goal to turn the human race into non-thinking automatons, right? You think that's working right now? For as long as a as man has pursued power over the masses, mind control has been orchestrated by those who study human behavior in order to bend large population to the will of a small elite group. Who is that? Masons, Illuminati, Rothschilds, Rockefellers, right? So it says, today we have entered a perilous phase where mind control has taken on a physical, scientific dimension that threatens to become permanent, a permanent state if we do not become aware of the tools at the disposal of the technocratic dictatorship unfolding a worldwide scale, right? Modern, modern mind control is both technological and psychology, psychological. Tests show that simply by exposing the methods of mind control, what do they expose over there? TV, movies, right? The effects can be reduced or eliminated at, at least for mind control, advertising, and propaganda. More difficult to counter are the physical instru uh, instru instru whatever that's in. <laughs> with, with the military industrial complex continues to develop and improve on. Now let's see what some of these mind controls are. School down. What's the first one? Education. education has ruined. The white man's education has ruined our children. Why? What are they teaching? Let's start with the first and most common topic. History. His story. His story, right? They never tell us about what 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 happened before slavery? They never tell us about where we, we came from. Right? They hit on a little bit about slavery and a little bit about the Indians. And then they go into all these great things that they so called did. And half of that was you got a question? Yeah, 
Martin Luther, Martin Luther King, yeah. It wasn't his dream. What's your time? Right. Oh, my bad. His, his legal name is Michael Lucifer King. I'm sorry. All right, let's see what else. Advertising and propaganda. What's the number one advertisement right now? Homosexuality. It's on almost every billboard, especially in Cleveland. It's about three big, the biggest billboards is homosexuality. And how they, it's an accepted thing. You go on the west side of Cleveland, you'll see it. Right? And now they're making AIDS cool. And every movie they every movie they're in, right? Every movie that happens when it comes to homosexuality, you always see what? A one one black man. Just like I'm gonna show you a pure, pure example, right? Everybody seen the movie Troy? With Brad Pitt, right? Everybody seen it, right? He was a strong guy, right? Dominate, couldn't nobody kill him. He was undefeated, nobody beat him, right? They just came out with a series a couple weeks ago. Same thing, Troy movie, right? And it was a black man this time, right? Same, strong, you know, resilient, you know, couldn't nobody warrior, couldn't nobody kill him, right? And white people were mad about that. But guess what they did to that character? They made him gay. And not only did they make him gay, they had another black man who was his partner. So the story of the kings, he actually really was the king who was the king. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the movie with Brad Pitt didn't show the truth of the movie with the black man. Did you see how they do that, though? Why didn't they show with Brad Pitt? Mm -hmm. so, so heroic, white man. Most of the Greeks was gay. Rome, they were all gay. But when it comes to the white man, he's he's this light. He's his hero. Comes to the black man, he may be good, but there's some bad things about him. We're gonna show you the bad things first. Mm -hmm. It was a cousin. He was gay with his cousin. And who was they who was they kissing in front of him in the movie? A white woman. Jezebel herself. Right? And she was proud of him on the beach. <laughs> All right, well, let's see what else. Predictive programming, right? Many still deny that predictive programming is real. I would invite anyone to examine the range of documentation put together by Alan Watt and come to any other conclusion that this form of mind control is widely. Predictive programming has its origins in predominantly, at least this Hollywood where the big screen can offer a big vision of where society is heading. Prophecy, television. Just look back at the books and movies which thought were uh, far-fetched or scientific fiction independence day. And take a close look around at society today. Hmm. Who can give me a, a good example of that? A good movie like that. What is the old movie that we've seen that is happening today? Not just yet, not just yet. Anybody give me a good one? What was, what was Morpheus talking about to Neil? He was being programmed, right? right? And going through things and not be able to see. Are they talking about physically or spiritually? But if you ain't got your spirit right, you won't be able to see physically, right? What else? Sports, politics, and religion. Sports tell you if you stand up for any type of rights for blacks, you will be persecuted and lose your job. Also, they say, shut your mouth and just play. Politics. We ain't got to speak on that. Donald Trump is an example. Religion. <laughs> Christianity has killed our black, black people. Islam has killed our black people. The hope of wickedness. 
devilism, baptism, or um, Baptist, right? What else? Atheists. You don't have to believe in anything, just nature. Hinduism, Kemetic, Egyptologies, where re wrestling started, where homosexuality. Everybody think wrestling is a thing where a man just slams a man on the ground. They used to, they created with, that was created in Egypt when they used to slam each other in a sexual way. And now black people are proud to take on this culture of comedics. Right? Mm, next one. Mind control. Remember, this is mind control. Ooh. Water and air. GMOs. And not only food, but water now. Air trails, air. They pollute the air with all these trucks. And planes. This is all mind control, y'all. This is all mind control. Seven. Military testing. What was the first military test? Or six, drugs. Six is drugs. We don't need to go to that. We understand that. But now, all praise to the Most High is turning against them, right? Now they, now they, now they dying off their own drugs. Drugs are not in the white community. They ain't losing their damn mind. They don't know what to do. How did this happen? Right. Now, because they on drugs, they over here popping each other in schools. They ain't never gonna find no black man or black child popping no nobody in school. Why? Because they got the they got the uh, metal detectors right right in the schools. Right. What else? Military testing. What was the first military testing? What happened to the Indians? Syphilis. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much it on that. Let's go to the next one. Next one. Yeah. Uh, let's go back up. So it says social engineering, the art of hacking of human beings, is an old is an age old threat, but the uh, metaphoric rise of online social media usage has led to a new security challenge: social media engineering. In this attack space, there are no more there are no matrix style hacker skills required. It's not human versus computer. It's human versus human. Mm. Social media is not just one-to-one -one communication, but one to many, which greatly expands the attack surface. Criminals can spread malicious links across an entire organization. Watch this. How many of y'all ever went on a website? Let's use Amazon, for example. And that same thing that you looked up has now popped up as a ad on Instagram. So when we sign up on these social medias and give all our information about our age, where we're from, our full name, they have now unlocked the data on not only who we are, but what we like to do. Right? So, where are we at? Oh, okay, we at all humans are vulnerable to social engineering, which is facts. Some are harder to trick than others, those who are not really social heads. However, in any large group of people, a few are guaranteed to fail the test, and it may not matter that victims can eventually discover the roots. Once the money is gone or the ele election is over, the hackers have moved on to other targets. With social media engineering, there is no reason for a hacker to think small. Of course, a lonely citizen, lonely citizen is fair game. They are too small to fight back. However, even a powerful nation state agency is a great target. Uh, Wells Fargo last year just got caught. Just got caught for investing all that money from their clients. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. And social media provides a way to connect to each and every one of, uh, uh, one of its human employees. Mm. 
What is to be done? We should force all citizens to access the internet by true name in free countries. There is no such rule because humans need some degree of online and uh, anonymity for personal and for political reasons. For people like this, right? However, this also means that it can be difficult to know if any online account has been created solely for the purpose of social engineering. We're going to start right there. Go to the next link. So now y'all see, y'all ever had them friend requests that you just don't know who it is. They got one person following them. They look like somebody you know, and it just pop ups, right? And you probably receive, I know I received like 30 of them. I'm like, man, what is this? Now all of a sudden you get tagged in these posts of pornos or, or, or bad videos, not knowing if you click on that link, it's a wrap. They have now accessed everything about you, from you to your family, right? So we got to be aware of these things, okay? So the next one is, go down. Keep going, keep going. That's it? Okay, uh, this is the last one on the mind. So it says, social engineering attacks are not only becoming more common against enterprises in SB. SB, uh, SMBs, but they are also increasingly sophisticated. With hackers devising ever, ever more clever methods for fooling employees and individuals into hanging over valuable company data, enterprises must use due diligence and effort to stay two steps ahead of cyber criminals. Social engineering attacks typically involve some form of psychological manipulation, fooling otherwise unsuspecting users or employees into hanging over confidential or sensitive data commonly. So what's one way, that, what's one form of this? You ever received an email talking about we need your information to update or otherwise you're going to lose something? Those are all hackers. Those are all hackers. So it says commonly social engineering involves email or other communication that invokes urgency, fear, or similar emotions in the victim, leading the victim to promptly reveal sensitive information Click a uh, malicious link or open a malicious file because social engineering involves a human element preventing these attacks. It can be tricky, uh, tricky for enterprises. So me personally, I used to work at Bank of America, and I know one person. She literally lost one hundred fifty thousand dollars in credit because she thought it was an email from us. And I can tell you right now, this ain't happening to us like this. It used to, it's not happening so much. All their devices that they have used against us is now turning against them. Hallelujah, man. So let's go on. So that's the end of, what's the next one? What's the next one? Okay, perfect. Perfect, stay right there. So that's the end of the first, or that's the end of the second stage is the mind, right? So we had the spirit. We got to get right. Then we once we get the spirit right, we get our mind right, right? Now we have to get the body right. Right? So let's get first Peter 5 and 1. I got shit. Can you click that? All right, here, see if you can uh, plug this up. Take that, that up. Turn that to move. Just plug it up, yeah. Take that bottom out. Yep. So good. Yep. Good. You good? You good? All right. So we got the spirit. We got the mind. Now it's time to get to the body for our fitness gurus. Yeah. So if you do got like you know some things you want to hit on about some of your, your wisdom and knowledge, definitely share with us. Okay. All right. So First Peter five and eleven. So we have to understand the second stage of growing into a Yah temple. We have to get our spirit in mind together. So let's go to the last and very important stage is the body. 
right? The body is very important because it's literally the glue that keeps your temple together, right? It gets the tone on what type of mood you're in and also is at the forefront of what people see before the spirit. Right? 1 Peter 5 and 1. Who got that? 1 Peter 5 and 1. Yeah, 1 Peter 5 and 1. The elders which are among you I exhort, who I, who am also uh, who am also an elders, and a witness of the sufferings of Mashiach. So it's a witness. Witness of the suffering, right? This is a person who looks like they are about this work, right? You got to look the part, right? How you gonna walk around here looking like Floyd Mayweather? And talk about you a prophet. Not so you gotta be a bum. Oh, but you don't look like a man of the Lord when you got all this, this bling bling on. You know what I'm saying? You, you just not dressing the part of a prophet, right? You dressing like a woman. You got some men around here wearing weaves now. You know, we all want to strive to be like the prophets, right? You know, prophets wore long garments. And they were, they were the representation of Yah. And we have to be that same testimony, right? The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Mashiach, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Right, so through the prophets, no, you you got it. through the prophets or the elders, things shall be revealed for those who do have a pure spirit, mind, and body, right? Keep going. Verse 2. Feed the flock of Elohim which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. Not by constraint, but willingly. But willingly. You have to willingly give. Keep going. Not for filthy lucre. For what? Not for filthy lucre. For what? But of a ready mind. But of a what? But of a ready mind. Are you ready and willing to give your body, mind, and spirit for the king? If you are, say king. Amen. Amen. Keep going. Verse 3. Neither as being lords over Elohim's heritage. Neither what? Neither as being lords over Elohim's heritage. And then you got all these people with different titles, right? Yeah, most how ordained that? We all are servants, right? We all supposed to have certain roles, right? Are we supposed to put ourselves in position? Neither as being lords over Elohim's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Who is the chief shepherd? Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves to the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. And be what? Yeah, all of you be subject to one another. So we all supposed to be there for one another, but we also have to go to our elders for advice, right? Everything is done in decency and order. Okay? okay. All right. Come on. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves to the unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For Elohim scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. Mm, that's mm -hmm. Keep going. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of Elohim. Humble yourselves. What does poor mean? I'm to be humble, right? We always take that as if it's like a, a physical poor person. Poor just means to be humble. Me. You not sit here boasting and bragging about yourself, saying I got this, I got that. The spirit gonna go bear witness to other people that you got. You want if you truly in the truth and you about this walk. You don't need to tell you, I did this, I did that. Because the people are going to be a testimony for you. Just like in, uh, in, in the prophet, it says the congregation shall declare their arms. arms right? It shouldn't be the teacher or, 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 or elder saying, pay me. The people through your good works will be willing to give to you as you have given yourself to them. Okay? So we must also give the physical part of our body to the people, meaning what? 
We up here doing the work. We up here teaching, right? But we also learn it from one another, right? We go out on the highway and byway to teach the people and try to heal the people, right? That is a physical sacrifice, right? Because not only does that take time away from our families, but that takes time and patience dealing with other people's spirits. But we have to be girded up in armor, right? See how all this is coming together now? The armor of Yah is what we have to put on. And all that concludes the mind, body, and the spirit. Keep going. We're going to go to verse 11. Verse 11. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right. Somebody give me Sirach uh, 3730. Sirach 37 and 30. So we have to realize that every living thing on this earth, including the animals, were made for a purpose. Okay? Now, even though Leviticus touches on what we can or cannot eat, we have to strive to have a yali, I like to say yali body, a godly body, right? Okay? So we must start in the beginning of creation, right? The very first diet, which was a vegan based diet. You know that? You know the first diet was a vegan based? The first diet was a vegan based. Somebody give me Sirach 30, 37 30 real quick. Go ahead. Sirach chapter 37, verse 30. For excess of meats. What? For excess of meats. For access of meats. Bringeth sickness and suffering. Will turn into choice. Say it one more time. For excess of meats bringeth sickness and suffering. What? Sickness and suffering. Why does it bring sickness and suffering? It's dead. And most of the animals that we eat today are slaughtered and have chemical based things in them. That's why you see chicken. Well, that's overly big because they have, yeah, they put steroids in these chickens. Right? Now we got to understand something, right? Yes, the Most High gave us meat, right? He gave us meat. But you got to understand during that time he said that we had our own thing going on. So we made our, our, our meat and our veggies and stuff, right? Now who making our meat and veggies? And you know they're just full of wickedness. And they try to do that to kill us. Just like they put liquor stores in every corner in the hood. And gun stores, right? The number one thing they was pushing back in, in the 80s and 70s and all that was beer. Why? Because beer can kill a man's seed. But see, our seed is so strong through y'all. Can't nobody kill it. I don't care if you're a crackhead. <laughs> You do drugs, oh, you you can have a child because your seed is that strong. Right? But we have to understand, yes, he gave us meats, but these are very things that's killing us. Who's done? Who's number one in cancer? What else? What else we number one in? Diabetes. I know my family has a lot of people with diabetes. What else? That's, that's more of a sexual. I mean, no, no, this is more so of what we are as far as physical health from eating. High cholesterol, right? Why are we number one and the same people who eat the same meat the other nations? Why are they not number one? They were not built the same. They don't have the same genetic build as us. That's why they lack melanin. That's why their hair is like a shaggy dog. That's why they eat red meat. They did that since the beginning of time. But when we eat it, we throw up. Our lungs can't take that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because in the beginning, what? Genesis 1 and 29. Genesis 1 and 29. Now, again, I'm not saying every, you know what I'm saying, go vegan. I'm just saying for us to have a, a true godly body, we must have to. We must be one in all things in the spirit. 
And most of the time, and I can attest to that, I know they can attest to this, when we were vegans, what, what, what was different? More energy. What else? Clearer skin. Clearer skin. What else? Clearer mind. Clearer mind. Healthy hair. You wasn't sleepy all the time. You ain't feel heavy. You ain't call. You ain't get the itis, right? <laughs> Again, it's okay to eat meat because of the most high ordained, but we talking about the godly temple, and that godly temple is clear. Just like with with beef, right? What's what's the one thing about beef? I love steak. Man, cow disease. It takes you like 12 years or 14 years to digest it. It takes you 12 to 14 years to digest it out of your system. It's like gum. Gum, gum dissolves gum dissolves quicker in your system than steak. Right? You see how everything, the most high the man of balance, man, he made everything how it is. And we cannot defile our temple physically and spiritually. Right? Again, it's not. It's okay to eat meat. You know what I'm saying? But read that Sirach, Sirach, uh, 37 and 30 again. <laughs> the book of Sirach, chapter 37, verse 30. For excess of meats bringeth sickness and... So fighting will turn into COVID. By sir fighting many have perished, but he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. Okay. He that taketh heed to the testimonies and the message of Yah shall what? What's the longest live people on this planet? Yeah. And a lot of vegans do what? They fast. Because the thing about our bodies, our bodies will never. What, what's that saying? You don't. You don't. What is it? You don't live to eat. You eat to live. <laughs> So again, if we want a godly temple, we must first take these natural cleansing steps. We have to detox our spirit, which is going to detox our mind, and which is going to follow the detoxation of all toxics in our body. That's why when we fast, for those who just start, they get the shakes. Right? They, 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 they ill. Some people faint. They body are not used to not sacrifice. The spirit is not used to sacrifice, right? So let's get the original diet. Genesis 1 and 29. Genesis 1, verse 29. And Elohim said, Behold, I have given you every herb. Every what? Every herb. What does herb mean? Plants. In the context of that is plant, I believe. Somebody, we can pull it up real quick. Plant, right? Somebody got the concordance? Let's get it real quick. I'll get it. So I think I'm going to be a vegan too. That's it. Hmm? Herb, herb, herb is herb, herbage, grass, green plants. That's what an herb is, right? So read that again. Genesis one, verse twenty-nine. And Elohim, God, and Yahuwah said, "Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, every herb bearing seed, right? Every plant bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth." And every tree in which is the fruit of every tree yielding seed, 
to you it shall be for meat. To you it shall be for meat. What does that word meat mean? It means protein, food, to eat, object of devouring, consuming. So this is what we were supposed to eat since the beginning. Adam was a vegan. Yeah, what? A godly body. Just like with some vegans, if you really pay attention, a lot of vegans is always happy and shiny, right? Mm. So, again, I'm not trying to convince anybody to be a vegan, but there are some great benefits of being a vegan. <laughs> it clears your mind, body, and spirit. Right? So, Let's get to Genesis 9 and 3, because I know a lot of people um, like to talk about this scripture right here. So we're, regarding um, talking about a godly temple, I understand that brother like to go to this scripture, so let's read it. Uh, Genesis 9 and 3. Genesis chapter 9, verse 3. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb. Have I given you all things but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat? Say what? Shall ye not eat? So we have to understand what was what, what was even happening during that time? That was time that was the time after the flood, right? That was the time after the flood when they finally got off the ark. So the vegetation during that time was it was finished. You know what I'm saying? It was done. So at the time, what did he have? What, what was the only thing he had on the ark? You gotta eat, right? So yeah, he has ordained us to eat meat due to what? Circumstances like a flood or the curses. When he told us that we should go on one of all things, right? So yes, you know, we have access to meat and we can't eat it, but we're talking about a godly temple. We're not talking about an average temple, a fit temple. Talk about a godly temple, okay? All right, so let's get to the rock 37 31. Let's get an understanding. Of this. And somebody give me Daniel 1 and 7. I think that's what I want. Daniel 1 and 7. So let's read the rock 37 30 again. Yeah, anyone say? Sirach chapter 37, verse 30. For excess of meats bringeth sickness, and what? bringeth sickness and suffering will turn into children. By surfeiting hath many perish, but he take he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. He that taketh heed what? Prolongeth his life. And we want to live, right? Start at 7, day 1 to 7. All right? Daniel 1 to 7. Unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave name. For he gave unto Daniel, uh, Daniel the name of Belshazzar and to uh, Tanakhda of Syrah and to uh, Mishael or Meshka to Arusha of Ebenezer. Wait, what verse is that? I'm sorry, okay, eight. Okay. But Daniel uh, proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. With the what? The portion of the king's meat. Wow. Why do you, why do you say that? So we know that they we know that they put GMOs and all these steroids in these meats that we eat, and we eat them willingly. What are we doing? And we all are guilty of that, right? Especially last night. <laughs> all right. Keep going. Nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So even wine has pork in it. Some wine has pork in it. Not all of them, but some wine has pork in it and pig's blood in it. Mogadavid, no, I checked. 
Movie David. Movie David is a kosher wine. It's called Passover wine. The end in Movie David is no sugar or carbs. <laughs> all right, all praise, all praise, all praise, all praise, all praise. <laughs> Huh? All right. Oh, no, you're good. Give me uh First Corinthians six and thirteen, and let me see if this is what I really want. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me Romans fourteen. Romans fourteen. First Corinthians. I want Romans fourteen first. You stay right there. Somebody give me Romans fourteen. I think we all work on y'all. Yeah, we all work on y'all. You got it, Romans 14. The book of Romans chapter 14, verse 1. Him that is weak in faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things. That he may eat what? For one believeth that he may eat all things. All together, that he may what? Another of all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs. Why? Because herbs does what? Strength. You want to hit on that? You want to hit on herbs? Verse 3. Let him not let him that eateth. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For Elohim hath received him. So yeah, we have brothers and sisters who do meat, right? And we got brothers and sisters who don't eat meat. Both still are good, but physically one is healthier than another. Mm. Was a lot of the prophets vegans? Was a lot of prophets vegans and pescatarians? Right? A lot of the prophets were vegans and pescatarians, right? All right, so I want you to keep going. Uh, let's see, let's see, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it on that one. So give me 1 Corinthians 6 and 13, right? Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. But Elohim shall destroy both it and them. Now the body. Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. But Elohim shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for Adonai, and Adonai for the body. So we know. That's not saying he destroyed people who eat meat. Okay, <laughs> he just basically saying it. it's gonna be a time when, when we go back to the kingdom, we not eat meat, man. Man, just my understanding. Why? How can we prove that? Give me, you stay where you at. Give me Revelation twenty one. Revelation twenty one. Mm. 
And I want uh, give me start at start at let's start at verse one. Twenty one and one. Yeah. Revelations twenty one and one. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. So this is gonna be the new Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, right? Come on. And I, the Hokanah, saw the holy city near Jerusalem. Coming down from Elohim mm. out of heaven, mm. prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Mm -hmm. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Elohim is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, mm -hmm. and Elohim himself shall be with them. Mm. So when was the last time Elohim was truly with anybody? I would say, yeah, Moses, but truly with Adam. He was truly with Adam, right? Adam was right there with him. Adam, Adam, clear mind, mind and spirit. And he was truly with him. Right? So most people trying to say we're going to eat meat and food, but let's see. Because the, the same Adam was, how he, how he had a godly body then is what we're going to have going into. Right? And be their Elohim. Right. Verse 4. Now pay attention to this. And Elohim shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So we should not go through these curses no more that we're going through, right? Come on. And there shall be no more death. There shall be no more what? Death. death. No more what? Death. death. No more what? Death. death. You got to kill an animal to be here? Yeah. Right. So no more what? Death. No more death. Keep going. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. Mm, no more what? Pain. 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 And all things will be in order, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah, man. All praises, man. So, that, we're going to keep going. We, we got a little bit more, but that is how it's going to be. We're going to have godly bodies. We're going to get back to being able to pick leaves off the tree and eat it. And it's going to be righteous. It's going to be clean. You would have little bugs eating on it with little holes in it. You know what I'm saying? They would have none of that. I think, did that die? It did. It's awesome. It's all good. All right. So let's get back to so about 37 and 30 for my meat eaters. All right. For excessive meats bringeth sickness. Bring what? Sickness. Mm. And surfeiting will turn into choler. What does that mean? What does choler mean? Cholamine is the bile. The bile, the sub, the superabundance of this fluid creates anger, which is formerly supposed to be produced or of irritation of the passions. So by what you eat creates your mood. What you eat creates your mood. How can we prove that? After eating some fried chicken, what's the first thing we want to do? Now, for us who has been vegan, we eat a good plant-based food. How we feel? Yeah. Oh man, I want to go on a run. Energize, man. What else we got to do today, right? So read that. Read that again. For excess of meats, bringing sickness, and surfeiting will turn into children. And so what? Children. Uh huh. By surfeiting, have many perished. But he that taketh heed, prolonging, prolonging his life. So now that you know what meat can do to your body, how it can change you, your insides and your outside, outer appearance, you have to take heed. You have to take heed of these things. Right? Because as you get older, we all can attest what you eat starts really showing and catching up to you. How you took care of your body. That could be an example football. It's starting to catch up to me. But I didn't treat my body right physically. Because I didn't have the mindset to understand how to treat it. Okay? All right, so we have to understand, man, eating meat causes, for one, it causes mood swings. Some people are happy. Some people get sleepy. Some people get sick or even get a disease. So let's get to Daniel 8. Daniel 8. So knowing these things, we got to know defiling our bodies like this one only makes us 
uh, it, it'll make our spiritual connection harder to get to you, right? right? So why do you think when we or our ancestors, for that matter, prayed the mo uh, to the Most High, during that time they were fasting? Why? Can anybody tell me why were they fasting and they prayed the most during that time? That's true, but what what is the true reason they prayed the most during fasting? Because their bodies were clean. Their bodies were clean. They were under fire during that period of time. And that's when the most high comes to you the majority of the time, is when you're clean, right? But if we're constantly clean in our eatings, you understand that you'll be heard more, right? So during that fasting, their spirits were more open to the most high. And truth be told, man, a lot of people get visions during fasting, right? So we're going to take Daniel, for example. 